So you have to think about what you want and there's different returns for every single one. But in my opinion, every single one of those strategies beat out the stock market. The and you're asking like, what do we do about is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you more than 30 years i got my real estate license in the um, and your your origin story is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that kuka you know I, i'm a little more strict with what i'm i'm looking at uh everybody wants to know what are the different strategies in real estate that you can do and I will say this, wholesaling is what I do, okay? So wholesaling is just one strategy. There's buy and holds. There are uh, fix and flips. There are short, with buy and holds, there are short term, there are mid term, and then there's long term tenants. Those are all different strategies for the property. You can also, during buy and holds, you can rent it out by the room, okay? With all of that, that's all in the buy and hold. Then you got the fix and flip, okay? With the fix and flip that's still right now money, okay? So you have to go from one fix and flip to the next fix and flip to the next to the next. With buy and holds, every different strategy long term, there's a lot less to do. With mid term, there's a, or there's a little bit more turnaround. And for short term, there's a lot more turnaround and it runs more like a business every day. The stock market will give you an average of about six to seven percent per year. Okay. This year, I don't know, but the longevity is gives you about six to seven percent per year in the stock market. So does real estate beat those odds? Normally they do. I usually, my investors usually get a 12 to 18 percent return on their money with with just the buying holds. The higher percentage, unfortunately, is gonna be in the lower income areas because they need those higher percentage, higher percentages of cash on cash return in order to accommodate for any hiccups that they're going to have. For instance, a uh, the tenant stealing the furnace, stealing the hot water tank. And if you don't know that they do, they do that, you had never been in Detroit, okay, or Pontiac. Yeah. You you look at those because those areas, the house does not appreciate as much. It doesn't. So in the suburbs where the houses appreciate, they can take the lower cash on cash return and get not only the appreciation, the depreciation, and then you also get it, the cash on cash return, your your. Uh, I don't want to call it passive income, but your residual income, okay? Because buying holes, they're passive, they are passive, but you have to set up systems to make them passive. Just by owning one, they're not passive because you still have to manage that property and manage that tenant, okay? When you put systems in place, and that's what I'm all about is systems, okay? When you put systems in place, that right there, will uh, help you become uh, become passive income, okay? Because now you have systems in place for other people to make those. Now you have to include those in your numbers. You have to include the property management. You have to include vacancy. You have to include, that way you can still buy the property right, okay? Where you're still making money. Not only that is it one mistake that uh, a lot of new people uh, do with their uh, new, with their buying holds. They don't think about the updated taxes. Okay, if you think about the updated taxes, you can go on a, on a website. Michigan, we have one one website where you can look up for anywhere in Michigan. Okay, your state's probably going to have the same thing. Okay but you have to look at the updated taxes for what you purchased the property for, the new SE value. The SE value is going to be half of your purchase price, 
okay? When you have that, then you look at the taxes, put that in your spreadsheet, put that in your numbers, and do your numbers that way. That way, I have a friend of mine who bought and hold, held a property with a very low interest rate, but he didn't take into account the updated taxes. It was a brand new build, so the taxes were really low, and as soon as they updated the taxes, it ended up costing him $100 a month just to have that tenant in there. Now, he's going to get the appreciation of the property, and he's going to get the depreciation for tax incentives throughout the years. He asked me, is it worth keeping or to sell it? I told him, if you can afford it, keep it because you can always raise rents. You can always raise rents later on, okay? You know, the next year you're gonna raise them $100. Well, now you're breaking even, okay? But every year you're going to get a, um, we'll call it a, you know, $15,000 uh, depreciation on your taxes. Now you can write off that amount, okay? It's, you're gonna, the depreciation is you're gonna take the purchase price multiplied by 27.5 and you can do that per year. That is according to the IRS, okay? Now, what happens with that is, is you talk to a CPA, I'm not a CPA expert, I'm just a business owner, so please, this is not financial advice. You take that you can take up to the first seven years, okay, uh, all at once. But now you have to remember that the the you can make take multiple years up to the first seven years. So say I I made a bunch of pro or made a bunch of money on my fix and flips, and I have this buy and hold. Well, now I want to take two to three years of the depreci depreciation. I can do that. Again, talk to your CPA to make sure. But that is the IRS tax code. Look it up. All right. With that being said, uh, you can look at any of these strategies, and I want you to take into account everything. Okay. You have to look at your own personal life and what you can and can't afford. Okay. I know what I can and can't afford. You know what you can and can't afford. Write it all down and follow that. Do not get emotional about a property. As soon as you get emotional, you lose money. As soon as emotions are involved, you lose money, okay? So, from there, take any of this advice as you, as you want. Do consult a CPA, please do. Um, I always have conversations with my CPA constantly throughout the year, just to make sure we're doing things on the up and up and making sure everything's right. But with that being said, I love real estate. Real estate is awesome. And I know if you do too, keep doing it and keep pushing. I'll see you on the next video. If you can, leave a comment and let me know you made it to the end of this video, okay? Let me know. I wanna see who left, say I made it. And let me know how many deals you've done. Or, if you haven't done any deals, reach, reach out to me. My contact info is in the, in, in the description. And we'll be, I'd be happy to JV on any deals you have. Okay? Especially in the Michigan area. Alright? See you guys on the next video. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room